So this was the, these were the solutions for the first three answers last night. You can only see the first two right now. Let me zoom in a little more so you can see better. <laughs> doesn't want to agree with us, but anyway. The first one was in standard form, so just defining all of our things, axis of symmetry, take the axis of symmetry, plug it in to get the vertex, to get the y-intercept, set x to zero, to get the root, set y to zero, factor and solve, okay? But you'll see numbers one, two, and three were all close to line for you to sample. So all the rest of them obviously have to work on. The parts with the graphs, I'm gonna do also, I'll do the same thing tonight, I'll post the first three of them. So when you go home to practice graphs, you can see what the first three look like, and then the rest of them you can work on your own. I want you to be checking them, obviously, not just copying the first three. Um, the, the topic we're going to go through today, graphic parabolas, is very simple. Once we've done those things that we worked on yesterday, and that's the reason that we did that. Okay, so we're going to fly through today's concept. It'll be very easy, you'll see. Um, if you want your concepts back from yesterday, I will have them, but please wait until break to get them. Okay. I'm working on most of them right now. They're, some of them are done, some are not. So I No, no. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long way. <laughs> during break today, during, after uh, second period, come by. Just come by my room after break. You'll see me then. All right, so let's get started now. For today's concept, we're going to look again, like I just said, at graphing parabolas. The plan is the following. Did you not record uh, I think I am, actually. I think I hit it. But yeah, you did. Let me see. Yes. Thank you, though, for checking. John, what do you need? We're going to try and go through an example of every possible topic. So, for example, we're going to look at real rational roots as one graph. We're going to look at real irrational roots. We're going to look at real repeated roots. We're going to look at imaginary roots. Then we're going to go to vertex form, do two of those. Then we're going to go to intercept form, so that we can get through every possible type today. Okay, there are really only, I mean, there's really only three forms, and then within each form you can have different graphs. So you know you have standard form, vertex form, and intercept form, and then you can have different types of graphs within each form. The first is standard form of the axis. Say again? Standard form is like the same as axis. Well, they all have an axis of symmetry. But for standard form, the axis of symmetry happens to be negative over 2a. That's what you're talking about. But they all have axis. Axis of symmetry is just a line that goes down the middle of the parabola. They all have one because they're all symmetric. Okay? Cool. Let's start with the first one. Okay? First, we're going to start with f of x. This is number one here. Okay? f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. Okay. Now, from yesterday, can somebody remember, without looking at their stuff, what were the four things that I asked you to find in that entire pack of dirt? Roots, Roots. y-intercept, axis of symmetry, and vertex. vertex. Good. Now, all four of those things are equally important. You need all of them. There's one more thing we're going to also find, and I'll show you that toward the end of this problem. Okay, it's a fifth, the fifth idea that will help us grasp this. So, with this problem, Quickly, find those four things. On your own, find those four things. I would recommend, well, either starting with the y-intercept or the axis of symmetry. To find the roots for this kind of question, you can just run it right into your program on your calculator. You don't have to go through the steps every time. Again, roots, y-intercept, axis of symmetry, and the vertex. Those four things. Oh. You're stuck? Please raise your hand and ask for help if you need help.
again, remembering that we are in standard form. Is I know the reason I understand is about the reasons. Oh, yes. I don't want ah. Other people work at least I have. Do you have enough information that you can try? Come on. You want to think about that a lot, so. I want to go over that in a second. I'll tell you why that happened. <laughs> quickly, people, quickly. Before we go any further, I noticed there was either, I think I made the mistake, to be honest, but let's go through this. In your calculator program, okay, if, you, if you're using the program, or even if you're not using the program, open it up. And the way to open up your calculator program is to go to Program, and then go over to Edit. Okay, go to Program, and then go over to Edit, and then select the program that you're about to edit, which is probably the only one that's in there. Okay? For me, this is the one that we were working on, QF, or Quadratic Form. One thing I noticed, okay, one thing I noticed is the following. I don't know if I forgot to say this in class or if people forgot to write it. You see where you have the, in your code of line, you're going to see negative b plus the square root of d all over 2a. Make sure you have parentheses here around the 2a. Again, look at your code of line. So in the beginning, you're going to have display, then prompt, then the actual storing of dis the discriminant, and then we have the next line where it displays the answers there. For some reason, either I forgot to say it or I don't know, but I've noticed with two people, so I think I forgot to say it. The 2A needs to have parentheses around it. Everybody see what I'm talking about, talking about right now? Okay, look in your program. If you don't have parentheses around the 2A, please change it. Because if you don't, it's saying divided by 2 times A. But we know it's all over 2A. Again, the denominator is 2A. So that needs to have parentheses around it. And you'll notice your answer might have been wrong. Okay, so please go back and change that. I've only seen two people with that error so far. But I'm not sure what, where it came from. Okay? What do you display? Where did display come from? Remember when we were writing the program? Slightly. Go to program, go over to edit. Go to program, go over to edit, choose the program you want, hit enter, go down until you get to this line of code. I mean, we got through all these lines, Jason, so I'm not going to redo it. We stopped here. Remember we stopped at the delete variable? So you should have everything up until right here. I the word display? Yeah. you got to go to second and then catalog and find display under D. Okay? All right. So again, just make sure you change that. Anyway, back to this problem now. So for this problem, we see that our coefficients are 2, negative 3, negative 5. So please, immediately, run your program. We want 2. So program, I'm going to go to the quadratic program, hit enter, 
enter, it's asking me what is A? A is 2, B is negative 3, and C is negative 5. And there are my two roots if they show up. There they go. 2.5 and negative 1. If you use the quadratic formula, you will get the same answers. Okay? You will get the exact same answers. Check your work if you didn't. Now, first of all, what types of roots are these? They're real. Good. That's one statement. They are real for sure. They're not imaginary. There's no I there. What else are they? I'm sorry? Distinguishable or distinct. Very good. They're different. Very good. Heard another word over here? Rational. How do you know they're rational, Mickey? You didn't look at the square roots. How do you know they're rational? What is the definition of rational? Very good. Terminating decimal. Whenever you see a terminating decimal, it is rational. And clearly, these decimals do not go on forever. And it doesn't even matter because really, there would be a repeating zero afterward if you think about it. So if you see a repeating decimal or a terminating decimal, it means they are rational. Okay, they are rational. You can always look also at b squared minus 4ac. If that is not a perfect square, then it is irrational. Again, in this case, b squared minus 4ac would be 9 minus 4 times 2 is 8 times 5 is 40. 9 plus 49. 9 plus 40, which is 49. So b squared minus 4ac in this example should be 49. Since that is a perfect square, our roots are rational here. Okay? Now, let's write that down. So we've got for our roots, negative 1, negative 1, and 2.5. Again, remembering that the roots are located on the x-axis. On the x-axis. So if you wanted to write these as points, if you wanted to write these as coordinates, the coordinates are negative 1, 0, and 2.5, 0. Again, because they're on the x-axis. Remembering that there's no height to the y value. Next, what is the y-intercept, everybody? Negative 5, again. Standard form, quickly look at the last term every time. If it's in the correct order, obviously. Whatever the constant term is, is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 5. Girls, please stop talking. The axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. Derek? 0.75. Good, because it's 3 over 2a. Well, that's 3 over 4, which is 0.75. Okay? Again, what kind of a line is the axis of symmetry? How could you describe it? What, what, what is it? Vertical. vertical. The word we're looking for is vertical. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line. Vertical lines always go by the equation x equals some number. Horizontal lines are y equals some number. So here, here is my actual equation of the vertical line. Please don't just write down 0.75. The formula is x equals negative b over 2a because of the simple fact that we are looking at a vertical line, thus x equals. Okay? F x equals. So you're going to put x equals in Or you're taking off. It will help you for your own good, trust me. Okay? Because you know how many people end up making this a point or they add another root here? A lot of students will make a mistake and they'll say, well, here's my two roots, and these always say x equals, right? Because the quadratic formula says x equals negative b. So people put x equals and then they see another x equals and they end up putting three roots down there. And then they try to graph that and it doesn't work. So I'm just trying to help you guys. So again, this is a line. This is a coordinate. These are coordinates. Okay? Again, it is important to get yourself used to this habit. Once you get used to it enough, and you don't need to write the coordinates, and you can just write the roots, that's fine. But again, these are coordinates. These three. This is a vertical line. Next, the vertex. How do I get the vertex? Into where? Which equation? Very good. Into the original function. Take the axis, plug it back into the original function. You're going to have to square 0.75, multiply it by 2, subtract 0.75 by 3, subtract 5. Juliet, what do you get? I don't know. I'm checking the coordinates. Yep, that's fine. 0.75. Very good. That's correct. Again, if you're having trouble, make sure you're doing your order of operations correctly. You must square first, then multiply by 2, 
then subtract the quantity three times 0.75, then subtract five at the end. Okay, order of operations. Anthony. You don't have to, but when you're plotting a point, it does help to know the decimal value. For example, the x coordinate is three quarters, right? Yes. So you can leave that as three quarters, and that would be six and one eighth. That's 1 .2, 0.125 is an eighth. So this would be negative six and one eighth. Well, as an improper fraction, that's 49 over eight. And you can leave it like that, but what is 49 over eight when I grab a point? You know what I mean? So it's good to know the representation as a decimal. So now I've got one, two, three things, three, four things here. The four things that you worked on yesterday. So again, it should have been a quick review. The last thing I want you to do is the following. The last thing, it's easy to do this when you see the graph of this. So let's start by sketching the graph. Now, I'm going to go through this graph slowly the first time so you can see my mindset. Okay, I'm thinking about what I have going on here. I've got a y-intercept at negative 5, okay? So I know that my y-intercept is going to be down here in this area somewhere. Okay? You don't have to draw what I'm drawing yet. I'm just showing you how I do this. Next, the axis is at 3 quarters. So let's say like maybe 1 is over here. The axis will be somewhere in here. The vertex is at 3 quarters and then negative 6. So that might be a little bit lower. That's like over here in that region. There's my vertex. And this is what I'm thinking about. My roots are at negative 1 and 2.5. Negative 1 is around here. 2.5 is around here. Okay, so look at this general scheme. I'm more shifted toward this area of the graph. Does everybody see that? I'm not really focused on this area up here or this area down here as much. It's mainly zooming in over here on the bottom right. So when I actually graph this, it might be important to graph it like this. Again, I'm extending these lines a little bit more than I extended these two lines because I know that my root is only going to go to negative 1. My other root is only going to go to 2.5. My axis is at 3 quarters. My y-intercept is down at negative 5. And my vertex is right here at negative 6.25. Okay? So again, based on the numbers that I have, it will help me to actually think about what the shape of the graph is here. Now, the last thing that is important, and this one is a bit of a, an extra point to guide you when you're graphing your curve. The axis of symmetry means that everything on the left should be the same as everything on the right. Isn't that what symmetry means? So I can take this point here, the y-intercept always, and reflect it over the line and put another point on the other side. Again, take the y-intercept and reflect it and put it on another point. Well, how far do I have to reflect it? What is the distance between the y-intercept and the axis of symmetry? How far is that x distance here? What is it? Where did that come from? How do you know? Because it's the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is located at x equals 0.75. So this distance in the x direction here is 0.75. So I need to go another 0.75 on the other side. What's 0.75 and another 0.75? 1.5. Mixed answers. 1.5. Again, three quarters in your hand. Another three quarters. You got a dollar fifty, right? Seventy-five cents. Seventy-five cents. So 0.75 and point so that means that this point is going to be located right around here and down at the same height. So I know it's going to be at negative 5 for the y value and for the x value I'm going to be looking make that a little clearer <laughs> around here. Okay? Again, why am I doing this? Just so it will help me get the shape of the graph on the other side. I've got a good shape of the graph on the left side. I know that the shape's going to look something like this. But on the right side without that point it could get a little bit messy. So here, using this point here we know that this is going to look like this on this side also. Go ahead. Well, the y-intercept is already there, right? This was here. This was here from before. We didn't change that. I just reflected a point on the other side. Okay? So how do we reflect that point over? We realize the distance between the y-axis and the axis of symmetry there was 0.75. That's 
That was that little delta x, if you want to think about it. That's the little gap right here. Okay, that's the delta x value, that little arrow. Now, if we go another 0.75 on the other side, so we start with 0.75 here, we go over another 0.75, and we put our actual point there. So again, that's where that green point comes from. And that's the only exception to what we did yesterday. Everything else that we did yesterday is on the graph already. And then you just connect your points. Right? Questions on this? Straightforward enough? Yeah. Okay. Let's do some more examples. We're going to do these examples a little quicker than that one. So I'm going to quickly go through some of them. Sometimes I might give you the answer for them to show you what we're going to go through. So let's say we have a next function. Let's say number two. We have g of x equals negative 4 x squared minus 7x minus 2. Okay? Let's work together on this. Okay? What is the y-intercept, everybody? Negative 2. Negative 2. Good. So the y-intercept, I'm going to have 0, negative 2. Good. Next. Axis of symmetry here. Good, 7 eighths. Again, negative b, so negative, negative 7. Again, the axis of symmetry tells us to do negative b all over 2a. Okay, negative b all over 2a. So here we're going to have negative, negative, which is a positive, over a negative, so negative 7 eighths. Well, as a decimal, that'll be negative 0.875. Okay, negative 0.875. What is A is S of? Axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. The, the problem says to do negative B over 2A. B is negative 7. So I'm doing negative, negative 7, which it does, oh, does not matter, guys. We, I hope we all realize, right? See how I left the negative up top with the 7? I just canceled these two negatives here. I made both of those positives. It's the same thing, okay? Again, the 7, the negative 7 and the negative 4, I canceled those positives and left the negative up top. Again, as we always say, there could be a negative up top or a negative down below. Either way, it's still negative. If you have a negative in both, they cancel. So it's fine if it's just 7 over negative 8. Yes, 7 over negative 8 is the exact same thing. Or if you put a negative sign in front of the fraction, it's the same thing. Okay? Top, bottom, or in front, either one. Next. The vertex. What do I do again to get the vertex, everybody? Plug it in where? Good. Take this number, plug it into the original. If you do that, you will get negative 0.875 comma 1.06 as a rounding. You might get another number around the point 1.06. Check your value there, please. Again, take the negative 0.875 plug it into the function. There's a very easy way to plug it into a function, if you remember, from concept 12. Concept 12, we talked about evaluating the height of a function. Well, that's what we're doing here. If you go to your y equals and plug in this equation, and then just use a table, it'll do the same thing. Again, to show very quickly here, if you go to your y equals, if you go to your y equals and you plug in the function, which in this case is negative 4x squared minus, whoops, minus 7x minus 2. There's my function right there. If I want to figure out what the value of the function is, or the vertex, I just have to plug it in. So I go to second table. In my table, I'm going to delete whatever's there, and I'm going to plug in negative 0.875. Hit enter. There's your 1.06. Okay? Again, what did the calculator just do? It plugged in negative 0.875 for the x's and gave out the result. Okay? Does everybody have a calculator set up this way so that there's not a bunch of numbers on the x-axis? You have a bunch of numbers here? Okay, let's, let's go through this real quick. See how there's no numbers listed here under x? I'm able to choose the x values myself. Here's how you do that. Go to second and then you'll see hit the window button above window you see table settings so second and then hit window it'll bring up your table settings now all you need to do is say this the independent variable what's the independent variable which one what is it x so since the independent variable is x we are asking the calculator an x 
And what is it returning for us? The y, or the dependent. Very good. So we are asking, hence ask is highlighted, what the independent variable is. I've asked this value of 8.875, negative. The calculator gives out the dependent value automatically. It gives you out the result every time. So if you change this to ask and then auto, you'll be able to ask values for the x. Okay? Make sure you change that. I highly recommend that. Personally, I would never even have it on auto. The only reason they put it on auto is if you want like every interval or every 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you don't want to sit there and type it, it automatically shows it for you. But there's no need for that. Oh. You guys can all type it yourself. Auto. Okay? So again, we type in the value. If I wanted to know at 3, I would just type in a 3. But I don't need 3, so I don't care about that. But again, you can type in any number there. It'll tell you what the result is. Next. So what, yeah, yeah. We've got the vertex. Javon, here's the top. And 1.06, very good. What about the last one? What about the x-intercept for this one? Andrew, uh, Anthony, sorry. X intercepts. We're going to have two of them. You can use the quadratic formula or use the program. Okay, what was the other one? Okay, be careful though, because that's a little bit off. I have negative 1.39. Yes. And then one negative 1.36. That's correct. Okay. Again, quickly, either use the quadratic formula. Negative 1.36. Again, so negative 1.39. And negative 0 0.36. Again, these are my roots. And remembering that the roots are the x-intercepts. So, for this problem, I do also want to think about the general shape. Can somebody tell me anything by just looking at the function about the general shape of the graph? Eric? Like this? Why like this? Ah, you fix yourself. Very good. Very good. When A is negative, it means it opens down. And that's where we have a maximum value at the vertex. Again, when A is negative, it opens downward. So, if I want to graph this problem, I can tell you already, looking at your y values, your y-intercept is only down to negative 2. The vertex only goes up to 1.06. So on the y-axis, I'm really only going between positive 1 and negative 2. So really here, if I want to make, let's say, we'll make this 1, make this negative 1, and make that negative 2. I don't have to go any further than that. Because look at all your y-values. Again, the y-intercept is negative 2. That's on the graph. The vertex goes up to 1.06. That is also up here on the graph. So we don't have to worry about any higher or lower values than that. For the x values, for the x values, what is my smallest, what is my smallest x value? Look at your roots or look at your axis symmetry. What is the smallest number of all of them? What is it? Negative 1.39. 39, that's a 9 case. So negative 1.39 was one of my roots, and 0.36 was another root. Okay? So here, on this graph, I'm really only going maybe to negative 2 here. Okay? So again, you need to make your decision wisely when you're graphing. You need to think about the fact that I'm only ranging between 1 and negative 2 in the y, and in the x direction, I'm only going back as far as negative 1.39. So, here I have to start estimating. Negative 1.39 would be a little less than halfway. Next, negative 0.36. That's about a third. That's about a third. So I go about a third of the way over there. Next, the axis of symmetry is at point, negative 0.875. Okay, 875. Well, that's about right here. So here's my axis of symmetry. Okay? Again, I'm estimating right now because I'm drawing a sketch. The y-intercept was at negative 2. John, focus. Please stop talking. The vertex was at 
negative 0 0.875, 1.06 up here. So I've got my four major things so far. Now, I've got the axis of symmetry, the vertex, the roots, and the y-intercept. I can add one more point. Who can tell me from the last example, where can I add the fifth point? Where can I add the fifth point? Daniel? Opposite side of, side of what? Of Very good, sir. So we see we have this here. So we're going to loop over to the other side. Now, here's the hard part. This is a distance of 0.875. What is double 0.875? Very good, Lauren. 1.75. Because 0.875 is 7 eighths. Okay, 7 eighths and 7 eighths is 1 and 3 quarters. So 1.75. Uh, so here, my other point will be maybe right around here. Where's negative 2? Negative 2 is right here. Negative 1 is here. I've got to go 3 quarters of the way. So I'm looking at this height here, or this location here. So I'm going to have a point right there. Okay? Again, it's not always going to be perfectly drawn to scale, but we are sketching, so we see that if we go 0 0.75, we've got to go another. I'm sorry, 0 0.875, we've got to go another 0 0.875. So at this point in time, try and connect with the smooth curve. Okay? This one came out pretty good, yeah. Okay, the, the value is 0.875 negative, right? So I go, here's negative 1. This would be like negative 0.5 here. This would be like negative 0.75. So I kind of just want, I tried to go halfway in between those tick marks. And the axis of symmetry is always a vertical line. So the minute you find negative 0.875, which would occur pretty much right here, I was a little bit off, I just draw a vertical line there. This dot here is at negative 0.875. 1.06. That was the vertex. Again, this is the vertex. It's a good question. Negative 0.875, comma, 1.06. Okay? All right, continuing. We got a few more we got to get through still. The, the next one. And I want to do the next two specifically. The next one we're going to have a repeated root. And what after that we're going to have imaginary roots. The imaginary roots. Now, for this one, let's graph the function 0.5x squared. Sorry, we can call this h of x. And this is number 3. 0.5x squared plus 4x plus 8. Okay. Quickly, what do we know? Who knows what? Very good. Right away, please. No work needed when it's in standard form. Y intercept is at 0, 0,8. Very good. Anybody got the axis for me? Daniel. Negative 4 over 1. Very good. Axis symmetry is negative B over 2A, which results in negative 4 over 1, which tells me it's at x equals negative 4. Okay? Absolutely right. Good job. Again, negative B over 2A. The 2 times the 0.5 results in a 1 in the denominator. Next. The vertex, if I plug a negative 4 into this equation, what do I get to the vertex? Be careful. Zero. Check your work, people. Okay. If you square negative 4, you're going to get 16. Half of 16 is 8. This is going to be 8 minus 16 is negative 8 plus 8 gets you back to 0. And if you check negative 4 in your equation, you will get 0 as a y value. So we got the y-intercept, axis symmetry, the vertex, and finally we need the x-intercepts. What are the roots of this function? Back in the corner, Trayvon. What is it? Negative 4. Now, without even looking, without even looking at the root, look at the vertex, guys. Isn't the vertex on the x-axis? So think logically in your head. If a vertex is on the x-axis, we're talking about a graph that looks like this. Sorry. Or a graph that looks like this. Or a graph that looks like this. Right? Isn't that when the vertex is on the axis? So the vertex will also be the same as the roots. Because this, this function here, call this g of x. g of x only has one root. There it is, right there. Because it happens to be the vertex, actually. 
So in this case, if you use the quadratic formula, or if you run your program, for the roots, we're going to get negative 4, and we're going to get another negative 4. It's the same answer both times, because it's a repeated root. This is where that idea of the discriminant comes in. The discriminant is 0. When the discriminant is 0, we have real repeated roots. Real repeated? Yeah, that's what you can call it for now. And you could also say that the graph is tangent to the x-axis. We can say that this graph is tangent to the x-axis, because it touches it once. You know, right? you should, uh... Um, what do you get zero? Yes. You square it, you multiply it by one half, that will give you 8. You subtract 16, that will give you negative 8. You add 8, you get back to 0. Okay? So, those are my roots. So, let's graph this one. Now, for this kind of a problem, I know that my y values are going to be as high as 8 and as low as 0. Again, let me show you. Gentlemen, focus over there. Look at all your y values quickly. You're going to be a y value as high as 8, and the y value for the vertex is as low as 0. So for this kind of a graph, this might not have been the best decision. Again, the y value would be something as high as 8. So this might be 10, call this 5, and we go as low as 0. So I don't have to go any further. My roots, where are my roots located? Nowhere else. Negative 4, negative 4. Good. Just negative 4s. <laughs> so your root only has to go back to negative 5. So I really, this problem, don't really care about that side that much. And I don't care about this quadrant. So I'm pretty much in the second quadrant here. Okay, let's graph it. So at negative 4, so let's graph. Okay, there's my four, sl four slots. Here's negative 4. That's my vertex. Okay, well, where's my root? Very good. The same spot as we saw here. When the vertex is on the x-axis, we have the same as the root. So this root here is the same as the vertex. Next. I know for a fact that my y-intercept is at 8. That's up here. Now, my axis of symmetry was also at negative 4. There's my axis. So if I want to reflect a point over, where is that other point going to be located? I reflect the point over the axis of what is it? Negative 8. Again, this starts on the y-axis. This is negative 4. So if I reflect this point over, it's going to be all the way out here and negative 8. So I go up, and I put another point here. Again, this point that's in blue is your reflected point. We took the y-intercept, and we went not 4 units, but a solid 8 units over. Because we went 4 to get to the axis of symmetry, and then another 4 units to reflect it. Again, this gap here is 4 units. So if you want to reflect a point, you need to go all the way over, which is 8 units over. Now at this point in time, all I've got is my vertex and my two points. Well, at a vertex, you know there's going to be a curve. Am I going to have a min or a max here? Why? Is the lowest part based on the equation? Why? Because a is positive. Because a is positive. Good. A is positive, so it opens upward. And clearly, as An as Anthony said, look at the graph. You can see it's going to be a minimum just by looking at it. Okay, so there's my quadratic for this one. So we notice that the quadratic itself is tangent to the x-axis. It is tangent to the x-axis. Yes. Does that have to do with the word? Yeah. Not really. Um, although the tangent function, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, maybe Mr. Carter. You, is there any connection between tangent in geometry and the tangent? I know there is with triangles and with a unit circle. Me and Mr. Smith did a whole thing on it last year where the length of the tangent is tangent to the unit circle, actually, which is one of those weird things, and then some of the cotangent. But aside from that, there's not going to be a major connection between the two. Okay, but when we get to like concept 70, which is trigonometry, we can talk about that and show that. Okay? All right.
Good Don't question. <laughs> okay, let's do one more. There are a total of seven examples in your notes. We've done the first three. We're doing the fourth one. Five, six, and seven I'm going to leave for you guys if you want to look at it on your own. Just more examples to look at and vertex more. We have to see vertex, vertex, <laughs> intercept. Let's take a look at number four. <laughs> <laughs> now, focus. For this problem, here's what I want you guys to do. Find the roots first here. Find the roots of this problem right away, please. Trayvon, you got the roots ready? X squared. X squared plus 4x plus 6. Good gosh. What do you got, Brandon? Very good. Okay. So, this example is important because our roots will be imaginary. Okay? What do you got, Brandon? <laughs> Negative 2? Plus or minus? Good. What's the I component? Be careful. Check your work. Oh, no. You're good. You're good, Brandon. You're good. Now, once we have these two values for the roots, what does this tell me? Very good. That's exactly right. The roots. The roots always indicate where it touches the x-axis. Well, the roots in this case because the discriminant is zero, turn out to be imaginary. If you have imaginary roots, can you see them? No, they're imaginary. Okay. So in this case, when we graph this function later on, we're going to notice that this one is going to be off the axis, or it will be off the axis, as we discussed yesterday. So when you get the roots that are imaginary, can you actually use them for anything? So they're kind of a waste. So when you get roots that are imaginary, they don't even matter. It's just good to know because you're going to know that the shape will be either above the axis, opening up, or below the axis, opening down. Sorry, what's that? Okay? <laughs> you wrote it so that it indicates to you if you have something touching the x-axis, you made a mistake. Okay? So when you graph this, if you have x-intercepts, there's a mistake somewhere. Find the other three. Find the y-intercept, axis symmetry, vertex. Try and graph this one on your own. It's a little tougher because you don't have the roots. <laughs> oh my god. You can't tell you're possessed. It's kind of weird. I was Again, when you plot this, you're not going to be able to use the x-intercepts, clearly. <laughs> if you want to check your work on the board, I'm going to start listing. Already, those are the values you should have written down. The axis symmetry is very simple here. Easy numbers. The vertex is quite easy as well. Just remember that when you square the negative 2, it becomes positive. Okay? Finally, to graph this, we're going to use all these values. What was that? Oh. We're going to use all these values here. So the three values that you see are the only things we're going to use. And then we'll reflect. So for this graph, I know that my axis symmetry is at negative 2. I'm going to go as far up as positive 6 and as far down as positive 2 in the y-axis. So I'm really only focused on this range right here, this portion here, and this portion here again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my y-intercept at 6. Next, my vertex is negative 2, 2. 
negative 2, 2. There's my axis. Hold on. Take this point, reflect it over, go up to the top here. If we're at negative 2, 2, we're going to be at negative 4. Relax. And then finally, you're going to notice when you, when you connect this curve, you will not have any x-intercepts. You will not have them. Tonight, for practice, here's what you need to do. The same package, grab them all. Same package you work on, grab them all. If you want your concepts graded, come to room 209 during the break. If you want to see your grade for the concepts. <laughs> Trade in your pencils for IDs on the way out, make sure. You're supposed to write it in. I know, Why don't you write it in? Uh, how'd you get